Greetings ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel, I will be your host, Thrones, bringing you a role-playing build known as the Aegis Summoner. The Aegis Summoner in a nutshell is a role-playing build intended specifically for a niche casual playstyle, it is in no way intended for endgame trials, veteran stuff, really honestly just speaking, uh, normal dungeons normal content, questing around just for fun. The build revolves around being a desert-themed adventurer roaming the sands of the Alkir Desert. Our Aegis Summoner can be any race, any gender and any class. While it can be any race and any gender or any class, we will be showing you my iteration which, uh, which is basically Nord. That's because my favorite race in, is basically Nord in the Elder Scrolls universe, so that's why I have maybe 13 Nords the last time I checked. And we picked also in this case because of our access to the Hurricane skill and sticking close to that sand aesthetics, because our build is going to be all around that sand and uh, the Red God culture while being a Nord. Ideally you want to play a Red God, but I'm gonna play Nord. Now for the backstory. After losing his parents at a young age to the hands of werewolves, our character was in the hands of uh, in the lands of Skyrim until a kind red god brought him along with him. He learned to live in the lands of the red god and their own traditions. While growing up in the Alkir Desert, he was taught how to wield the blades and some of the secrets of the way of the sword, but not entirely. Thus, he created his own way of summoning a Aegis Guardian and utilizing his skill of the schools of magic, which he learned from all the uh, reading he did in his spare time. Our character later gets introduced to the existence of the Pyre Watch, who are a red god order dedicated to, to Waka and guarding the unhallowed grave in Bankurai. After the Grey Host was defeated at Bankurai Garrison in the first era, the remains of the werewolves and vampires army were burned to ashes and given to the Pyre Watch to safeguard at the tomb complex which became known as the Unhallowed grave. In the most recent times the Pyre Watch came under the threat by a mercenary group known as the Dragorkin and their necromancer master who wished to use the remains of their own ends. And uh, as our character really doesn't like werewolves nor vampires, he makes his way to there. And now for the build. We are using a Nord Sorcerer in this case. We're putting all of our uh, attributes into stamina. We have around 3000 weapon damage and 3000 spell damage, so basically two, two times the same thing. Because we are a Nord, we are having quite a lot of resistance. Uh, a little lower weapon critical and uh, spell critical is basically on the same level, that doesn't matter. We're using the Thief Stone because critical chance is not bad on this build, considering it is a RP build, so it really doesn't matter. Go wild, my friend. Go wild. Uh, we are now on our skills. For skills, we are using nothing overly fancy on our front bar or basically back bar. In this case, just put it on because of the aesthetics in the loading screen. We are using Dark Deal, so we can uh, sacrifice Magicka to gain some health and stamina back instantly, so we don't have to worry about our resources anytime soon. Hurricane is a very beautiful stamina skill uh, from the stamina Sor sorcerer and you can't go wrong with it. It gives you some major resolve and major res uh, resistance. You having physical spell resistance and movement speed while also dealing damage around yourself as a storm, which is basically the theme of this whole build. We're using Cobb for that beautiful bleed damage, there is no need for any explanation whatsoever. We're using critical surge for us to gain that major brutality and the main reason why we're using critical surge is basically the critical damage heals from it, um, which pairs quite nicely with the Thief Stone in my opinion. Then I'm personally using uh, Summon Unstable Clenifer, it deals physical damage over time and it actually can also heal you and uh, 
pet itself for a considerable amount, so you have quite a lot of heals and a lot of sturdiness with this build. I'm using the summon charged Atronach in this case because uh, the name of my character is basically Stormfist and uh, not going with a Storm Atronach would be quite a blasphemy. For the quote unquote front bar or back bar in my case, but the front bar, I'm using Bound Armaments. It is a very niche, very fun skill, uh, while slotted increasing your stamina and your uh, damage with light attacks, which pairs very well with the Crystal Weapon, which uh, gains you s uh, quite a bit, in my case 7,700 uh, 7, physical damage and reducing the target's armor by 1,000 for 5 seconds. So it is a very nice skill. Again, repeating, it's a very niche build, role-playing build, just pure fun. We're using Whirbling Blades, uh, I will get to the reason why we're using this in a second when we uh, compare it to some of our sets, but it is a very nice AoE uh, damage dealing ability which we can use. Deadly Cloak, uh, also going a little bit of AoE, and uh, Unstable Clenifer, uh, Clen Clanfear. Plan of I have no idea how to pronounce that. I don't care, honestly. Storm Atronach, quite again. If you can, you can go with whatever you heck you want. If you like uh, the dual wielding ultimate, go with it. Honestly, up to you. We're using also medium armor, so we'll get there in a second. For our gear. Now, this is going to be the fun part. Our own gear. We're currently using our main set being Aegis Colors, which is where the name of this build comes from, and uh, it's a very niche but a very fun set you can go with. When you deal critical damage with a martial melee attack, summon a lesser Aegis for 11 seconds, which basically spins around. So that's the reason why we're actually using the and Blades because it's going to be a lot of spin to win just just because of fun why not we are trying to match with the desert team you know because this character did grow up in a Kabir and uh, lesser Aegis just fits perfectly with this concept for the second set we're using Reliquin uh, the Reliquin set you don't have to use it I'm using it just because of the wind effects it gives around when you hit an enemy and uh, quite honestly, I don't have any problems with it, it's quite fun. Speaking of little windy things, we are using Asylum Dual Wielding, which basically every time you Whirlwind, it actually summons a uh, Whirlwind around you, basically. Which adds up a little bit to the desert theme, and the best part is, it is actually uh, the color of the wind around you is deserty, so really matches up for front bar or back bar. Depends on how you look at it. I'm using the Master's two-hander. I only got the powered one because I'm too lazy to transmute it into infused. But perfectly, if you want to go a little bit with the damage, you can go infused. But honestly, as I said, it's a role-playing build. Stats don't matter. We're just here for the visuals, giving you that nice wind effect. If you don't want to use uh, the Asylum weapons or a two-hander, you can always slot on the prior uh, Theoric monster set, which basically summons uh, another shadowy whirlwind, but I think it kind of ruins the desert -y effect and goes a little bit more edgy than he already is. Or you can always slot on Stormfist, honestly. You can go wild with it because we are already summoning a Storm Atronach, so why not have a Storm Atronach fist in the end? For CP, just go wild. Honestly, the things I'm going with is basically the Rationer for extra 30 minutes for my buff food. I'm using Liquid Efficiency, so my character has more potions, I guess. Steed's Blessing, I'm having this one for the movement speed outside of combat. Really nice thing if you want to run around, especially if you're an adventurer. And I'm using Treasure Hunter because my uh, character does rely a lot of, uh, on adventuring and fighting lost treasures in the Akaviri Sands, etc. etc. I'm also going with something like Way Shrine, Cost, Fall Break, Soul Reserver. Honestly, really subjective, up to you. 
for the blue tree warfare we're using the main one I'm using as uh, just uh, the same as the last build I actually used was Raving Bloats. I think I've mispronounced it on my last video so apologies on that. When you deal direct damage you heal for 7% of the damage done so the more damage you deal you can get a little bit of healing and it uh, pairs quite well with the two three other skills we slotted like the Clanifer healing and uh, the sorcerer skill which gives you healing for every crit critical you do is honestly you can't die in this except if you go into a veteran dungeon that's a different story this build is not intended for veteran dungeons it's niche it's casual just for playing around normal dungeons questing honestly we're going with armature just for the day uh, damage over time and uh, master at arms for the direct damage which pairs well with the raving blows we're also using biting aura for the area effect because we are spinning quite a lot in this build i slot on a little bit on the extended might just play around with it really doesn't matter i used also some boundless vitality for some maximum health i'm using fortified for that uh, extra armor because i am a nord and i do like feeling tanky as hell i'm using bloody renewal and siphoning spells the siphoning spells isn't a necessity you can slot on if you want regeneration or whatever you want but i'm using it just because of that uh, what is called uh, dark exchange so I can always have some magic at store and blood renewal or stamina build, so go stamina. Everything else, purely subjective, as I said. Nothing else. For fashion, we are using Pyre's Watch on basically everything except the weapons, but I'll get there in a second. So I really fell in love with this armor set, especially when paired with that... Uh, blindfold you get from i think it's from the crown store uh, around 1000 crowns you get a lot of accessories i really can't remember but it really looks bloody beautiful my character is basically a nord so it goes well we are using uh, basically i think it was medium 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 on everything the red you cannot die but everything else i went with white and a little bit of that colossus brass for that uh, not too shiny gold but still gold if you want to go a little bit more shiny you can always go with transluminal but i think that non-transluminal one is a little bit more well fitting for the weapons i'm using moloch kina in my uh, dual wielding bar but that's purely subjective because of the electricity around it and it pairs well with being a stamina sorcerer but you can always go with full Pyrus watch and uh, yeah and that's uh, yeah it's basically a, a, a what it's called I have no idea a desert cleaver or a, an axe or whatever it just just go wild purely subjective as said before for Bankbar, I'm actually using Volundrung because I think it kind of fits the theme because Volundrung was in the lore introduced as a weapon which was thrown by that Dwemer guy and uh, Hammerfell got basically its name from this one and I think it fits really well with the desert theme but as mentioned before go wild you can go full Pyre's watch you can go medium you can go heavy honestly purely subjective Anyways guys, I thank you for watching and I will see you around.